uh, or provide some information. I know we uh, sometimes take for granted both staff, the council, and the community on the job we do uh, with the city uh, with efficient, effective use of resources. Citizens and businesses today, I mean, we keep reading about it in the newspaper, but now more than ever, I think residents are going to want to make sure that they know that uh, the taxes they pay are util utilized in an efficient and uh, effective manner. We've got a long history of, of doing so, but again, I think we take it for granted. So I wanted to take a few minutes and not just say it, but uh, provide some data that would actually uh, demonstrate that we do uh, make good use of the resources we receive. Uh, to start with, won't go in a lot of detail, but uh, just, oops, back that up first, is the, the data real quick are from the most recent Census Bureau population data that were just in the newspaper. You know, everybody, population estimates go up and down, so we've looked at it in the past, but it was an opportune time to take the uh, data that were just released on population and the most accurate date, uh, data to date. The sales tax data, you can go to the uh, state comptroller and uh, look under local use and get the calendar year information. The tax rate, you can go on the website of the CADS. And then the valuations and the number of employees are from the most recent financial information on the uh, various cities' websites. And what we've got is uh, I took any city in the greater Houston area from 35 to 105,000, and that's roughly, we're right at 70,000, so I just 50% less and 50% more. And then we added all the cities in uh, Fort Bend County, over 10,000 people. There are a few other smaller cities, but all the major cities. And then others, uh, three others that we threw in there that uh, have a fairly low tax rate, but people believe are, uh, you know, nicer, more desirable places to live. And we end up with 15 cities. And if you look at the revenues per capita, uh, again, this doesn't account for all the revenues for the city's general fund, but this for Missouri City counts for 77% of our revenue. And if you look at most cities, sales tax and property tax are the two primary resources or revenues uh, cities have. And if you combine what we get in sales tax, and again, the sales tax, I'll just add too, that actually includes not just the 1% to the cities, but any of the special districts or the 4A, 4B corporations, what comes to the city or rebated back. So for instance, Missouri City, the money we actually receive is about $6 million, but we get uh, half of a penny back from Metro that we put toward streets. Baytown has some crime districts. So again, we tried to make this as as uh, apples to apples comparisons as we can. And if you look, we are right at the top of the revenue per capita. And I say the top, some of it might want to inverse it and say, look, we're behind, we're not receiving the same amount of revenue. But when you start realizing the level of service we provide, and again, we may, some people may argue we don't have the best streets or the best parks, but from across the board, when you look at the city services, I think most would realize we have quality city services and, and a quality of life here that uh, is very attractive to many, and that's why people choose to live here. But uh, point out that even Stafford, uh, with you know no tax rate and thus no property tax revenue, and their valuation is actually a little over two billion, but it was going to be uh, zero, and it wasn't on the website. But they seven hundred twenty-eight dollars per resident just on their sales tax. So again, if you look on what we collect, it's not just a comparison of the tax rate. As you know, tax rate is important. We track that. But it's not just the tax rate you charge on what ends up in the city coffers. The second thing we did was uh, try to look at employees per 1,000 citizens. And if you look, and, and we took the total number of employees, again, these are from city-approved budgets and uh, approved financial reports. Take out utilities. We don't util use ut or do utilities on a, uh, the MUDs do those, although we do get involved in utility review. In a lot of ways, we spend a lot of times with utilities, but we backed all the utilities out from all the other cities. Solid waste we contract out, as most cities now do. And then uh, even took out transit for uh, the Sugarland Airport. They have 34 employees out there, and then Galveston has a lot of that. But if you took the total number of full-time employees and then divide that per the 1,000 citizens, we have, we've always talked about well before I got here, Missouri City trying to do the work of two with three. And again, that's not here to, uh, we're not trying to whine or complain. I just won't think we need to, uh, again, tell the story of this city for many years through its uh, council and the employees have done a lot of quality service delivery with the efficient use of resources. And uh, we've said that and, and just wanted to start sharing the, the data. And if you take these numbers and look, pretty much anywhere you, uh, you know, again, you can 
tweak them however you want to or take different cities, but if you do it and try to do an honest and good faith comparison, we're always going to be right at the top in either one of those charts. One thing we have been working on the last few years or, or a number of years, 10 years or so, that we've started to reap some of the, the benefits from it is the commercial growth. Because if you go back to those other revenues, the ones that have the higher per capita, a lot of that is commercial growth or commercial uh, valuation. So from we're starting to see the results. From 2005 to the present, the commercial tax base has increased from a little over 15 percent to just slightly less than 23 percent on the, the portion of our total valuation, that four-something billion dollars. Since 2007, and 2007 is important because that's the year, even though much of the uh, economic, uh, if you want to say, downturn or collapse was uh, really felt in 08, the, the, uh, the commercial lending really started being restricted in 2007. So from 2007 on, even during the tightening of commercial lending and when a lot of people were not realizing the, the economic development success, we've added more than 2 million square feet of commercial space and have added more than 800 jobs. And of those 800 jobs, 500 are non-retail. We're not talking about the, the fast food jobs or anything like that. 500 of them are full-time industrial warehouse, commercial type of non-retail jobs. And those numbers do not even include Benny Keith that we're having the groundbreaking tomorrow that'll have several hundred thousand square feet uh, eventually of, of additional commercial space as well as a couple hundred employees in phase one, Star Fabricating that's over on Gessner, and then the suck at Walmart. There's a lot already underway and in the pipeline that those figures don't even include. So in short, uh, what was trying to make, it, how does the city do this? We keep saying we're efficient and effective, and uh, it's no secret, but again, I think sometimes we take for granted that we have the competent, dedicated employees. Over the last uh, couple of years, we've had a lot of those long-time employees uh, retire. That's what you want to see. Someone comes to the city, uh, works, continue to uh, progresses in their career, and, and decides to stay with you. We also have a lot of good business practices and decisions. It's not just by accident on some of our purchasing policies. For instance, we won't go into detail, but the surface water plant we've put out as a poster child a few times on how us dividing the bids up have saved several million dollars on just by the way we do it. It would have been more convenient, would have been less work on the engineer that we worked with, and, and it ended up saving a couple of million dollars. And as we've, Missouri City's always invested in technology, and we're going to need to continue to do that, but we've always uh, put forth uh, smart investments in technology where it's not just the latest fad but something that we know will be applicable and can help employees get the job done. So how do we keep doing it? Again, we need to, uh, as often through the uh, employees when they're retiring, talk about the, the council and the community providing the, the nice place to work. And it's not just the compensation and pay, but the atmosphere and all that. So we want to continue to create that kind of, uh, of uh, environment for employees to work in, as well as pay. You know, we're never going to, never have been top of the pay scale, but, but competitive wages with competitive benefits to be able to attract that same caliber of employee that we've enjoyed for many years. The other is continuous improvements to business practices and decisions. A couple of those, one, the, just an example, is the uh, change of occupancy. Council, after a number of years, decided that we were going to go ahead and, and not do the change of occupancy and inspections. Times have changed, the size of the city has changed, and now most of uh, uh, the uh, residential lenders are requiring inspections on their own to a higher degree and making sure it's done because of the lending uh, crank down on making sure that what they're loaning money for. So we've taken those about 20 percent of our staff time of inspections and permit clerks that we're now going to have available to do such things as the rental property inspections and some other areas that we're going to continue to work toward retaining our existing property base. Uh, one other example here is a small one that we can continue trying to try and encourage employees over the permit clerks over in uh, uh, the, the planning department on the rental inspections. We were sending out a poster card, the hard poster card, and a flat envelope to like frame, suitable for framing, so to speak, like the uh, health inspections. Well, those for a home really aren't needed. So the permit clerks say, why are we doing this? That's the way we had done all the permits. And so instead of sending the poster in the flat envelope for over a dollar, we fold them now and send them for the typical 41 cents or whatever, and that alone saves probably $1,500 to $2,000 a year based on the number of rental inspections. Sounds small, but if you get that throughout the organization and employees continuing to share ideas like that, that's really what it adds up with. The last one was uh, the new generation of technology. We've always been invested in technology and have used it very, very well on helping us do our jobs. 
last September we had a workshop with council and told y'all kind of 2010, 2011 in the IT area was going to be very busy. Y'all have seen a number of these, but what were we needing to do to kind of get the next generation? Uh, the infrastructure improvements, we're talking about the server and desktop uh, virtualization where you share software instead of software being on each computer. It's nothing new. A lot of companies are doing it, but again, that's where we're headed. The uh, SAN storage where we had 40 servers, now we're down to three or four, and it helps with uh, uh, backups for uh, disaster recovery, that type of thing. The other that council, I think at the end of last year that we're having installed now that will be complete soon is a 100 uh, megabyte pipe versus we have three now, just the speed of things. The website rebuild and redesign, y'all know, y'all have approved that contract. It's in the, the, the dashboards and some of the buzzwords that we're talking about where people can go on and monitor capital improvement projects and all. That's coming. It'll take uh, to this summer to get it fully implemented. But again, more efficiency for the employees as well as easier access for the uh, residents. GIS, we began we have begun integrating into all our business practices and decisions. Uh, code enforcement, we're going to have up where an uh, citizen can go on the website and see the status. You know, like we reported that home, why isn't it quit, uh, already resolved or addressed the code enforcement fraction? You'll be able to go on site eventually and check and know that it's been filed on, it's waiting pending a court date there. Uh, the way the police have been analyzing uh, crime and on, on the, uh, the crime tracker or whatever, on uh, raids, couldn't think of the name, that all that type of stuff is not only a better benefit for the employee but also for the uh, citizens. The last three have not come to council yet but will be coming in the next month or so uh, during April. One is our computer-aided dispatch that public safety uses that the call takers or, or dispatchers use to dispatch police or fire. That is 14 years old. It's no longer going to be supported by the company that we originally bought it from and uh, we're going to have to buy a new one, uh, new software. Uh, the other is enterprise resource planning, the ERP, that's, again, I'm not the IT guy, but that's the new buzzword. And uh, that's pretty much the backbone of the financials that you tie your permits and everything else to. So it's a common platform uh, of software. We're still analyzing whether we ought to be server-based where you house the software here, or what's becoming more and more common is to do the application service provider where it's actually housed off-site and we're just providing it. So everything backed up in storage and again it helps with disaster recovery. And uh, the last is the document management system upgrade. Uh, we've had uh, uh, Questus for a number of years and it again is kind of the end of its useful life without major upgrades to it. So we're analyzing if we ought to go with something different. You know, it'd be ideal if those three things could be one software vendor, and the odds are it's going to be either two or three. We've put out RFPs for everything at once, and uh, there's nothing. We now have 40-something pieces of software, and we're going to try to get down to two or three. And it'll have money savings, and a good portion of the savings is what's going to pay for the investment in the new software. So, uh, again, just wanted to, uh, in today's time, people are, are really pushing for and uh, often, you know, we're, we're asked by some in the community, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Uh, kind of your neighbors next door across town. And uh, what we often forget that we need to start realizing is that we, we are who people are starting to look to because of those earlier charts on efficiency. We get a lot of calls on how, what are y'all doing about this? And it's not so much we need to keep up with the Joneses as that we are. And uh, again, I think sometimes we just lose track of it and we're going to start pushing the information out to remind the community that uh, we try to do the best we can where there's always room for improvement, open to suggestions. But uh, this staff, the, the 300 roughly employees that we have, do have it on top of their list and, and try to do all they can with uh, what's provided to them by the, the taxes that uh, y'all budget for us. So that Very was good. it.